Hello, hello, more Dimers here and welcome back to Akiba Rubinstein Saga and Carlsbad 1907 tournament. Uh, this time I would like to show you the game between Akiba Rubinstein with the white pieces and German player, very strong player, Richard Teichmann. Um, Richard actually was 39 years old and he had the nickname Richard V. And the reason is because in the most of the tournaments, he got the fifth place, so he was definitely strong, but not as strong to win the, the strongest, the biggest tournaments. However, four years later, also in Karlsbad in 1911, he won one of the tournaments and he beat, for example, uh, Karl Schlechter, Akiba Rubinstein, uh, so he definitely was um, a worthy opponent. Now, Richard Teichmann uh, was number eight in the world at that time, uh, his estimated ranking 2600. In this game, he's going to play as Black and Akiba Rubinstein, of course, 24 years old, number 5 in the world with estimated ranking according to the chess metrics. 2724. Now, this game is important for a couple of reasons. So, first, first of all, we're gonna see the Rubinstein variation in the Queen's Gambit decline. Second and all, we're not gonna see only only the positional building the position but finally some tricks some tactical tricks by Akiba Rubinstein so without further ado let's see what happened uh, we have d4 now I would like to just mention that this game was analyzed later and it appeared for example in uh, Emmanuel Lasker's chess magazine the same year and also uh, Karl Schlechter wrote in the in the Deu Deutsche Schachzeitung in 1908 analyze both of these games so I will give you the flavor of that era what uh, Emmanuel Lasker and Karl Schlecht Schlechter mostly uh, said about that game. Uh, we have d5, nothing fancy here. We have e6, c4, knight f6, we have bishop g5, bishop e7, knight c3, knight b to d7, we have e3, and the castle. And now Rubinstein variation, for those who don't know, is queen c2. Now the name Rubinstein variation is a, is a quite misleading, maybe, if you think that Rubinstein got the first idea of that. Uh, no, not really. Uh, Rubinstein actually played that and met that in the game against Frank Marshall, who played that quite frequently. Uh, however, it was played also by Lasker a couple of years earlier. So it was known variation. However, Rubinstein uh, brought this to the new level, found the new lines and the new ideas. So this is why he played Queen C2. Uh, we have B6, Karl Schlechter. This is the first comment we can see um, from this Deutsche Schachzeit is like c5 like c5 should be played here indeed in the 21st century this is the main the main line however b6 of course also can be played we have c takes on d5 e takes on d5 bishop d3 preparing to castle or not um, and now we have bishop b7 uh, and here this position is a very very flexible one one of the, the main uh, idea here is actually to castle on the king side, very natural. However, it's also possible to castle on the queen side or immediately start to roll with the h pawn. So h4, you know, in the in the modern engines style. Uh, but keep in mind that uh, this kind of games were played already at the beginning of the 20th century. So the ideas are well known. Uh, Akiba Rubinstein chose to play the castle. Uh, Karl Schlechter make the notation. Maybe rook d1 would be very interesting. Now rook d1, uh, moving the rook to the d5, which is closed. It looks like doesn't make much sense. However, very natural for black is to play c5 so once the pawn is exchanged here and then white gonna have the semi open file so that can be interesting idea however as i said rubinstein castle on the queen side we have c5 as i said very natural move and now we have h4 uh, played in 1907 by rubinstein now karl schlechter noted that very important here to start the attack on the queen side because idea of you know making the rubinstein attack play the rubinstein variation here is that black is going to attack on the queen side and white is going to attack on the king side 
So C4, then A6, and then B5, B4, and so on. Very, very common idea here. Uh, however, we have Rook C8, which Karl Schlechter called just this is the weak move. Uh, however, sometimes it's played even nowadays. We have King B1, we have Rook E8, uh, we have D takes on C5, and now uh, quite an important moment. It was commented not only by, by Schlechter here, uh, but also later by, by other players, including Gary Kasparov. So Karl Schlechter said if the pawn takes, uh, the problem is that white actually can exchange the bishop for the defender of this pawn and put a lot of pressure. If the knight takes, which is the best move in the position, then bishop c4 looks like white gonna put too much pressure and win, finally win this pawn. Um, and the pawn is pinned as the knight is not longer on the d7. So here is the idea. However, Gary Kasparov and other guys, and also the engine of course, uh, suggest that queen b6 is sacrificing this pawn for a lot of initiative and how dangerous is that uh, you know from the Gary Kasparov's game so uh, what could happen here is probably exchanging everything and after exchanging, black has a very interesting idea of c4. Uh, so yes, white can double the rooks, uh, but then c3. And black has a really nice counterplay as this pawn is pinned. So, um, of course, something like b3 could be played and then a5, a4, a4 and so on. So very interesting idea for black to actually continue. And it looks like very strong even being pawned down, uh, but black would get a really really nice attacking chances here. Uh, however, we have a rook c5. Uh, it's still okay move. Uh, and now we have knight d4. Very strong move. Uh, and this is the critical moment of the game, which also was commented by Emmanuel Lasker, by uh, Karl Schlechter. Emmanuel Lasker said that still a6, you know, threatening this b5, b4 moves is the most important plan for black. It should be executed. Karl Schlechter saying uh, knight f8, and then maybe uh, defend the pawn on h7, maybe bring the knight to, to e6 also would be very flexible. Boris Spassky, very interesting, in uh, 1992, so definitely 20, 30 years after his prime, he played h6, and h6 is the strongest move recommended by the engine. So, you know, 1992, Boris Spassky uh, knew that move that h6 could be played here. However, we have knight e4, and this move is actually commented uh, as this is pretty weak move. Now, what would you play in this position as white? It's not that easy to actually find the plan for white, but there is one plan which is better than others. You can actually take some time in this position if you like to, you know, improve your chess thinking. Um, and I'm gonna show you the line. So uh, Akiba Rubinstein took the knight, as this knight is a pretty much dangerous here, bishop e4, d takes on e4, and now knight d to b5. And this was commented by uh, Emmanuel Lasker by a few simple strokes White has not only circumvented the formation of any hostile attack, but his pieces now virtually control the field. So white pieces controls everything now and black are in troubles. First of all, what is the threat? Uh, the threat is very simple. This knight can jump to d6 and attack the rook, so win the exchange or, uh, of course, the hanging bishop. So something has to be done. We have bishop a6, which is forced, and now queen a4 attacking the bishop. So bishop b5 is forced. We have knight b5, uh, and now bishop g5, h takes on g5, and black position uh, is worse and worse, but still very, very slowly. Now, the best what black can do in this position is actually very simple. Take this pawn and attack this knight twice. So black doesn't need to worry that this knight can be taken. Uh, probably what would happen is something like knight d6 and after rook e7, uh, keeping an eye on this on this knight, then of course queen a7, white gonna win one pawn, uh, but after h6, making some space, breathing space for the king, as the 8th um, rank is a, is a little bit uh, weak and can be a problem in a couple of uh, lines. 
and then probably knight e4 which looks like very very strong move actually you know forking here uh, of course black has moves like you know uh, queen f5 uh, queen a8 defending the knight now and with the check and after king h7 f3 just defend the knight but black has a very nice continuation now knight f6 attacking the knight on the on the e4 and the best continuation for white i'm not gonna show you all line uh but actually is g4 sacrificing this pawn and after knight g4 then play rook d8 you know with some ideas on the on the eighth rank and 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 so on so very very interesting um uh, line and very very sharp and very difficult to actually say uh who is attacking whom because the line is is completely insane however as i said queen g5 was the best in this position and then play rook e7 however richard a uh, teichmann play rook e7 first so over protecting the the knight uh, and now we have rook d4 so akiba simply wants to win um yet another pawn we have queen a8 defending of course defending with the pawn is not easy uh, as this pawn is a really does the really great job he is, is the torn here uh, you know controlling f6 so this pawn is really really annoying a uh, queen a8 was played now we have b4 by akiba rubinstein um, and now the rook just has to retreat if the rook takes on the on the g5 it looks like very strong move however white gonna get control over the c file um, and the position of black gonna be very very uh, difficult to play uh, you cannot even take the pawn on g2 which looks like very strong because you have knight d6 uh, with the rook on the on the c8 uh, and keep in mind that the queen is for example trapped here uh this and this and this all the squares are controlled by the, by the white pieces so it's not even uh possible to escape with the with the queen so that is the problem so Richard Teichmann decided to stay on the on the C file. We have Rook C8 and now Knight D6 anyway. So still attacking the Rook on C8. Uh, and now it was very important to move the rook maybe to c7 maybe to d8 to d8 is a slightly better however still white have very very nice uh, tactic here uh, you can actually try to find it's a it's a quite long not easy to find and uh, but it's a very nice pattern so if you are a pattern lover then maybe you can find it and um, if not if you are not trained in this field then you can maybe just enjoy that with the g6 and now black would not like to play with the you know open the position of the of the king that would be suicidal especially with the queen uh on this diagonal with the knight so it always looks like very very fishy so uh, h takes on g6 but then white have a very nice continuation with the queen d1 which doesn't look dangerous yet uh, the idea is not to bring the queen on the h file but rather create this battery and it looks like okay the knight is defended twice so there is no problem however in the next moves white gonna you know build the battery on the h file and that's you know defending the position of the king uh will be very difficult the best move for black is actually knight f6 uh but now this is the point where you can actually try to find the tactic how to win material and get the better end game okay so the move is rook h8 sacrifice the rook and the point is that after king h8 uh knight f7 with the check with the attack on the on the rook we're gonna have rook f7 rook d8 and after f exchanging everything white's gonna have the queen for the rook and the knight so uh, white shouldn't have a problems in winning uh, also these pawns let's say um are not that great to defend so black uh, would have a very very hard time in the end game and white shouldn't have any problems as i said um richard timer however didn't bring the rook to the to the c7 or d8 first he attacked the queen so this is the time where you can actually pause the video and find the winning continuation for white while i enjoy my cup of tea okay ready so of course there are plenty of moves which are just good to to win however after knight c8 the move we are looking for richard teichmann resign
and he resign because he cannot do anything first if he takes the queen then of course uh, he gonna get in this position where we have two rooks and the knight for the queen so taking the queen is not that great um, and also if queen c8 then simply queen a7 and white have um, the exchange up and the pawn up so pawn and exchange should be enough to win. Moreover, uh, white have a lot of uh, pressure on the, for example, on the knight. The knight cannot be moved because the rook is pinned. So that's the first thing. The queen has to be moved. And once the queen is moved, uh, then we're gonna have rook h to d1 and then d8 square is compromised. So that's the problem. Knight f8 uh, can be played, but then queen b6 first, even bringing more here. Uh, also taking care of other squares here so the queen cannot escape. Uh, so here is a very very difficult knight e6 of course gonna lead to, to something like this and white gonna win the queen for the rook and if making a space like f6 trying to escape this way uh, which is the best in the position still we're gonna have rook d8 queen f7 and then queen b5 and with the two pawns uh, and exchange up of course white should also win uh, even if white tries to you know a counter attack somehow there is no problem problem because it always can be blocked forced to exchange the queens and win the game with the two um, extra passed pawn and connected passed pawns so that was another game of Akiba Rubinstein more tactical so I hope you like at least the the final tactic uh, it was pretty much spectacular and it proved that Akiba Rubinstein also can calculate uh, quite interesting tactics not only win you know by bringing more and more pressure to some point point. Um, and so I hope you like it and if you like it press like if for some reason you don't like it press unlike and if you do want to see more games of Akiba Rubinstein we are uh, closer and closer to his peak the strongest uh, you know the best games of his life then press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one